Blog Talk Radio. And I'm not immune to that. I have weird interracial thoughts about interracial relationships. Sometimes me and Melissa will be walking hand in hand, having a good day. I'll see another interracial couple and be like, oh, God damn. Oh, God damn. That is a damn shame. And Melissa will be like, Kamau, are you forgetting that I'm white? Like, nah, baby, that's different. You're my white girl. Greetings, context of white supremacy, gusty, renegade, and justice. I need to double check my microphone and uh, get cracking. I'm going to play a commercial just to make sure I'm straight. Is racism hurting you? On issues of race, are you unable to speak, think, and act with clarity and confidence? Are you tired of laughing when nothing is funny, smiling when you are not happy? Stop by counterracism.com today and help replace racism with justice. That's counter-racism.com. <laughs> yes. Skilled enough to deal with the technical difficulties. Context of white supremacy, gusty, renegade, and justice. Um... It's just what it says in the description. Um, it's just what it says in the description. Justice, are you with us? Hello? Yeah, we got gotcha. you. It's just what it says in the description. Uh, Justice, um, I, we normally communicate online during the programs, and I did not have my uh, online messenger open during the program. I forgot I'm old and victimized. And uh, I saw the messages that she was typing to me during the show about an hour after it ended, and uh, just <laughs> I thought it was a riot. Um, yeah, it was just incredible, uh, and I wanted to give her a chance to share her thoughts. Um, so I guess let's start before, because you also wrote some notes, so I want you to read those as well. But um, for pe- people who did not hear the program, missed it, um, could you... Could you share your thoughts, just what you felt about the program in general with W. Uh, Kamau Bell? It was, uh, well, what I thought is uh, it was tiring. I didn't like how he was joking about racism and white supremacy. I think that racism and white supremacy is serious. I really liked when I gave my definition of racism and white supremacy. Because if any non-white person listens to the show, then they might feel like <clears throat> like my definition is constructive in working against racism and white supremacy. Mr. Bell is with a white person, which I think that can confuse him and other victims. His big subject is on comedy, and he is a really confused victim. To me, this is one of the worst show shows I've ever done. <laughs> some callers came in and shared some comments and a few questions to ask the guests. Those are my uh, um, notes for today's show. Wow. Wow. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, when I... When I was checking my messages um, and I saw that you were typing during the program, you you seemed to understand that he was with a white person, married to a white person. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Do you think that do you think that has an impact on why he might be confused about racism? Yes. Why do you think that is? Because um, the white person can be confusing him, probably um, not talking to him about race and white supremacy. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I'm not going to... Uh, you, you said that you heard the cowbell a lot during the show. Is that true? Yes, about 20 times. 
I didn't count them. I didn't count them. Um, I predicted that there would be more than 15 cowbells during the show. I predicted. Um, I didn't count them. Maybe I should have, but I think, uh, I think anybody who heard that program, you should perhaps, um, perhaps count. Go through and count. And I have been told, uh, Lauren Ashley, uh, who was with me on the Friday program where I explained the significance of the cowbell, um, she said that she thinks I under rung the bell. She said there were several times where she was going ding, ding, and the bell didn't ring. And I, I, I think I did hold back a couple times uh, just because uh, – I thought I was ringing it a lot, and I thought people would say, you know, you you were just uh, ringing that for no reason. So I, I tried to be conservative with the bell ringing. Um, <laughs> but Justice says she heard it uh, at least 20 times, at least 20 times in a two-hour show. So that's, uh, wow, 120 minutes, and she heard it 20 times. Um, is my math good? That's, that's six. So that means it rung about once every six minutes about once every six minutes during the program. So uh, that's, that's a lot of bell ringing. <laughs> that's a lot of bell ringing. That's a lot of bell ringing. Um, what else did you, did you think about his jokes? Do you think, you know, him telling jokes is working against racism? No. Because he was, like, uh, <laughs> making jokes about uh, racism and white supremacy. Huh. Did you, do you think that well, could be constructive? Some of them. Hmm. He said that he tells the jokes about racism so that it will get people talking about racism. Do you think that's do you think that's constructive? Um, yes. But okay. I don't believe that uh they will Um I can you repeat that one more time? Sure. I said, uh, well, I asked if you thought it would be constructive if people started talking about racism as a result of hearing his jokes about racism. And you said, yes, you thought that, would, that could happen and that that would be constructive if it did. And then I thought you were going to say something about the people who would be hearing his jokes about racism. Oh, yeah. Um... But I don't think that that would, I don't think that uh, they would get, I don't think more non-white people would get informed, uh, just like a lot, but um, like a lot of jokes like that. I don't think uh, it would inform non-white, a lot of non-white people. Maybe huh. some, but not a lot. Why? Why do you, why do you think that way? Because they just like, um... Like, jokes are, like, for laughing, and then so they just laugh, but they don't, like, uh, think about, like, what he's saying and, like, uh, the words. Hmm. Hmm. So you think if people are going to talk about racism, that they should be serious? Racism should not be something we tell jokes about? Um, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I know uh, a lot of people make jokes about racism. Uh, he, he had a joke about uh, a white person. She joked about racism. She made a joke. She said that Tiger Woods should be lynched. She said she was just joking. Um, I know he, he mentioned Richard Pryor and Dave Chappelle. They told a lot of jokes uh, about racism. That was a bell. Oh, 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 I'm slacking on my job. I'm slacking on my job. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Um, there we go. Okay. Um, yeah, he mentioned some of those guys who talked, made jokes about racism, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, they they tend to be confused. A lot of the people that tell jokes about racism, they, they tend to say confusing things. Um, did you think he said anything that was confusing today? No. No, he didn't say anything, uh, or you understood the well, things he was saying. Well, I remember. Okay. Okay.
did you think he understood racism well? No. 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 Huh. Do you? Um, well, I don't think I understand racism well either, but, uh, no, I don't think, uh, I would have to say no. I don't think he demonstrated an understanding of race. I mean, <laughs> how many cow, how many cowbells did we hear today? We think about, uh, we think about 20. Um, yeah, I know it was more than 15, which I predicted. So that, I would just say count the cows. That was, that was my, that was the image that I was thinking before the program. I was thinking that uh, non-white people are so confused about racism that the cowbell is ringing the whole time they're talking and they don't hear the bell. They don't hear the bell. And in fact, the bell is around their neck. Like they are, <laughs> you are the cow. The bell is ringing the whole time. It's on their neck and they don't even realize it. Like, uh, yeah, I, I thought he was, I thought he was confused. I thought he was very confused. Very confused. Interesting. I wonder, do you think maybe some of, like, maybe his white wife or some of his white friends, do you think maybe some of them might have listened to the show? Um, that's a hard question. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough one. No evidence. I, don't, I suspect they might have. He said some of his friends were texting him during the show and stuff, so I, I suspect they may have. Um, or that they will hear it afterwards. <laughs> um, I don't, he, it seemed like there were some spots where, did you think he was comfortable with you asking him questions? Oh, I was muted. Um, he was. Wait, can you repeat that one more time? Sorry, yes, I, was, I was I, muted. I was a little confused. <laughs> <laughs> I get confused too. Um, do you think he was comfortable with you asking him questions? Yes, because uh, he was like, um, like saying thanks for the tough questions and. I uh, like <laughs> thank you for asking the question. She just kept saying that, and yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think he was a little uncomfortable with you asking him questions sometimes. Seemed that way. He said, I think he said you had him on the hot seat. Like, I think he pretty much admitted that you were uh, making him uncomfortable with some of the questions. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I felt like. Uh, he didn't seem as happy <laughs> towards the end of the show. He seemed a little, uh, I think he said it was, it was surreal, the experience that he had on the program. Um, yeah, I think it was, uh, maybe it made him think. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it made him think. Um, hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to think of, uh, did you think, you said you don't, you don't really like comedy. Did you, uh, <laughs> Did you did you sh share your thoughts about comedy in general? Yeah, on the show, I was like, I don't like comedy, but I do like mm. a little bit of drama. <laughs> I feel just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> um, uh, I wonder where that. I don't know. I don't know. It was it was very interesting. I have to uh, go back and listen to the broadcast again. I was glad I did not, because um, there were quite a few people on the line, I was glad I did not go to the phone lines after the program because I felt um, I felt a lot of the listeners might uh, <laughs> comment uh, on whether they thought he was confused or not, and uh, I did not want to... Uh, I didn't want to talk bad about a victim, but I was curious to hear Justice's thoughts um, particularly because she pointed out the cowbell early. Like, I looked at her note, she, she picked out the cowbell immediately and uh, thought it was significant, which I thought was great because I didn't, I didn't explain the cowbell to her. Um, but, yeah, she said, you, you think this is one of the worst shows ever? Is that what she said? I just want to be clear. Do you think this is one of the worst shows ever? 
Yes. I mean, I don't like joking around. I don't like joking around. But it's without a doubt the worst episode ever. She has voted. Who is that? Oh. <laughs> it's uh, a, a suspected racist uh, on The Simpsons. Um, but yeah, I uh, I think uh, it, it. I think will have a lot of value. Number one, the cowbells, the cowbells, the cowbells. Particularly when you go back and listen to that Friday program, because uh, Lauren Ashley has. I mean, we have been watching his material. Um, if you listen to the show, like he said, you know, we really dug through the crates to check out his acts. Um, we listened to his stuff. Um, almost for a week, uh, checking out, you know, different videos, and we read his tweets and everything, <laughs> like, uh, it was like I had a little research staff to do so, um, but yeah, I think, uh, just the metaphors, you know, go back and, and listen just for those metaphors, um, particularly the one where he compares black people in Africa, he says they are 100% black, and the black people in the United States, uh, they are like, uh, you, you can hear him break it down on the program, but he's basically comparing them to crystal meth, which is a drug, illicit drug, uh, and uh, cocaine. <laughs> That's what he's comparing black people in uh, the area of the world known as the United States. Um, and I mean, <laughs> I think, I think it's, it's pretty regular, pretty uh, acknowledged, uncontested, that black people are frequently stereotyped as uh, drug users, sellers, abusers. Uh, even when the statistics do not bear that out, um, to uh, have him comparing black people to uh, and and poor quality <laughs> narcotics at that that's uh, whew, that's that's kind of a and he he gave me that one I was two for three he gave me that one so yeah um, I don't know though but I I, I definitely um, <laughs> I, I respect uh, Justice's thoughts she she said uh, but it's without a doubt the worst episode ever. That was her vote. Um, you know, you have to check it out. See, I definitely think, as I said, the cowbells, the cowbells, if nothing else, check out the Friday program and what Lauren Ashley had to say, particularly her comments on sexual intercourse with a white person. Perhaps she'll call in and she can break that down again. But, yeah, we had, we had kind of uh, predicted uh, some of what went down today. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think she, she even said she was going to try and call in, so maybe we'll, we'll get her on the line. Um, Justice, she also had thoughts that she was going to share. If you want to call in, you can, you can ring in as well. The call-in number, uh, 347-215-6071, COWS, Context of White Supremacy. Um, Matthew Fry Jacobson. Uh, I'm giving uh, Justice a moment to do her thing. I'll even check the switchboard because somebody did call in. Uh, caller showing up at 111. Did you have a question or comment while we wait for Justice? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Hey, how you doing, Gus? Oh, greetings, 909. How are you doing, sir? Oh, pretty good, pretty good. Hi. I don't want yeah. did, you, uh, did you have something you wanted to share before uh, Justice gets back? Um, well, I was just thinking that I think it was a good idea that you... I didn't hear the show uh, live, but I think it's a good <clears throat> good idea that you didn't uh, um, do any more uh, conversating with the people uh, after the show went off, because I think it would have been, you know, kind of just talking about the dude... You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. It's a hard line. This was a, it's a hard line to have a show like this and then, um, you know, talk about it because it's not, it's not very much positive things you can kind of get out of it. Doesn't seem like that. So, I can see how that's pretty hard. Yeah. Um. I, I do want to make this very clear. Uh, number one, uh, I, I suspect he is a victim of racism and white supremacy. Um, and it's not talking bad about him. I actually, 
I actually uh, want to make sure that uh, I'm not bringing non-white people on the program just to uh, make them look bad or try and show them up or anything. Um, I really do think it's very telling, and I, I think very it's a nice illustration of the confusion that sexual intercourse with white people, I think, can cause because he does mention that a lot in his routine. And in fact, all you have to do is listen to the, listen out for the cowbells. That's all I have to say about that. I think it gives you a great illustration of the confusion that can be caused as a result of having sex with a white person. Um, listen for the cowbells. I, I think, uh, if you know the significance of the cowbells, I think makes that a very constructive program, <laughs> which is kind of what I was shooting for. Um, I'm gonna. Oh, I think we got. I think we got justice back. That's uh, woo. Um, she's back. Yes, she's back on. Right on. Um, context of white supremacy, justice, and uh, Gus T. Renegade. Um. Okie dokie. So last week, and just hang out, people that called in, hang out, I'll get you after. Justice does her thing. Um, last week, if you listen to the program with uh, Dr. Mowalimu K. Baruti, uh, excellent program, highly recommended, homosexuality uh, and effeminization of African males, great program. At the beginning of that program, I talked about how I just ran out of a seminar with the suspected racist white supremacist known as Matthew Fry Jacobson. Uh, Professor Jacobson was on the cows in uh, September of 2009. Uh, he is the author of Whiteness of a Different Color. He is a professor at Yale, Ivy Leaguer. Um, he was on the program, shared constructive information. Would have been a lot of cowbells during that program because sex between white people and non-white people came up a lot. Um, but he was on the program, gave constructive information, I thought. Uh, the book was good, I thought. Uh, and this was an indirect recommendation from the good Dr. Martin Kevorkian, uh, admitted white supremacist. Um, so he comes here. Uh, to Seattle to give, and let me tell you, this is how white the area that I'm in is, uh, how white this area is. Professor Jacobson comes in and he does an open seminar on Jimi Hendrix and racism, right? Seattle, this is Jimi Hendrix's uh, hometown, right? Okay. So that's the seminar for Tuesday, open to the public. On Wednesday, he does a private seminar on whiteness studies, Okay. Uh, it's limited to 30 people, and you had to RSVP to get on the list to uh, attend. Um, Gus uh, RSVP'd and attended, and also back of the bus, uh, Justice, um, and two other non-white individuals were present, and uh, mostly white people, um, mostly, <laughs> mostly white people, I believe, one black person other than the uh, uninvited guests. Um, I believe the one black person, she looked like she might have had a white parent. Uh, let me uh, get my cowbell handy because it's going to be ringing all over the place. Okay, so that's one. Um, and the facilitator for the discussion, non-black, non-white, so-called Asian male, married to a white person. Okay, that's that is key. Keep in mind, um, he's facilitating this discussion with Professor Jacobson, and uh, I will let Justice take it from there. Um, go right ahead. <laughs> She's got the cows. Go right ahead. Tell them your thoughts on what she saw at this at this presentation. Okay, and uh, before I go, I just wanted to say that. Um I've been counting the cowbells. There were five cowbells on the on this show so far. <laughs> right on. Five and counting. Okay. It's going to ring more, so <laughs> five and counting. Okay. Um, what I noticed is um, what I've studied and learned about the conferences, the white people were lying about if they were a racist, and most of them said no. I thought that. They were racist because they were white, and I suspect they were practicing racism and white supremacy. 
back of the bus asked this white person named Matthew Jacobson a question, and the question was, how do you practice racism white supremacy? He said, well, I don't know if I practice racism white supremacy, but I thought he was practicing racism white supremacy. He probably said that so that so the non-white people can think he is a good guy. He was also treating the Asian person like he was a, his dog. That is why I wanted to study about racism white supremacy. And that was six cowbells. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, what, you, you made a very interesting comment there. You said that the Asian male was, he was, uh, Matthew Jacobson was treating him like his dog. What, what did you see exactly that made you see that, say that? I mean, uh, he was like, it's like, uh, he kept, when the Asian person was trying to protect, um, the white person, the white person would, uh, like tap him like, like a dog, like saying, good boy. I, like he, I mean, like, he kept tapping him, to like, uh, like he's doing the right thing. Thank you for protecting me. Uh, <sighs> mm. Mm. <sighs> that was seven cowbells. Seven cowbells. Um, the cowbell is ringing right there. Uh, I need to get that blog. Man, Lauren has been on me. I need to write on my blog. And Justice needs to write on her blog, too. Wouldn't you all read if she made those blog entries? Wouldn't that be hot? Oh, man, you need to make that a blog entry. And I was going to tell you, if you had a blog, I could have uh, linked your blog in the show so your name would be lit up. It would be a link, and people could click on your name, and they could go to your blog, which I'm sure they would. They would go to read. I would go to read. But since you don't have it, um, I was saying that um, the cowbell rung right there. I need to get on my blog and write SAD, the acronym, look for it because you'll see it every time. S in SAD is for space. The non-white person that is uh, in a sexual relationship with a white person, they will create space for white people that they think are not racist. Guaranteed, look for it. A, abstract. They will not talk about racism, white supremacy, as though it's white people who are doing and saying things to practice racism. They will talk about it as though it's, what, what was the term he was using? <laughs> Halls of power. That's what he said. That's an example of speaking in an abstract way about racism. You're not making it people. It's people. It's a system of people, my definition. Uh, and D, defending white people. And she said... Matthew Fry Jacobson, he had a defense. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I actually, Lauren Ashley, I was talking to her. She, uh, she said I should change the D to divided loyalties. Bang. I said, yep, that's excellent. And that's a direct quote from a non-black, non-white female who was going to come on the cows to talk about racism, but... She found out about the compensatory sex pledge, no sex between white people and non-white people under white supremacy, and she changed her mind and admitted, because I am married to a white person, I have divided loyalties. That's an exact quote. I have divided loyalties, and that's what you will see. Uh, It'll be one, if not all, of those three things, those three attributes uh, amongst non-white people who are engaged sexually with a white person. And I suspect you saw some of that today with uh, W. Kamau Bell. Um, but back to, back to Jacobson. Um, Did you think most of the people there were white people, like the people that were listening to the talk with uh, Professor Jacobson? Yes. Okay. Hmm. Did you think the white people that were there, did you think they, they were really interested in um, replacing white supremacy with justice? No. 
because like they they were also laughing and I mean a lot of people hmm. were laughing. <laughs> I mean like uh, it's like white supremacy was a joke or something, but it's really not. And then it's hmm. like uh, Matthew Jacobson. He was kind of like saying, um, well, uh, like you think I don't know hmm. a lot uh, about like a lot of the things. But to the white people, when the white people were asking him questions, then he would answer them in a polite way. He would uh, say, like, uh, yeah, yeah, he would like uh, answer his, uh, he, or she, oh, he would answer um, their questions. But for the non-white people. Uh, he would say, well, um, I don't know, but I think uh, he really know, he really knew the answer to those questions. Hmm. Hmm. Did you, did you notice how people responded when back of the bus and I asked questions uh, of Professor Jacobson? Can you repeat that one more time, please? Yes. Um, did you notice how people responded when back of the bus and I asked questions of uh, Professor Jacobson? Yes. How did, uh, I guess, how did people look when both two black males, how did they look when two black males were asking questions? Back of the bus and and um and uh and, oh yeah yeah you um <laughs> well he he was um like he would like turn around he would face his whole body directly towards you or back of the bus. Um, he would just, just eye contact um, you and back of the bus. And that's one of the ways that white people use to grab spaces of white supremacy. Because it's like if they use that, then they'll say, oh, well, um, well, okay, well, uh, we'll, we'll, do what, we'll do what you say. And then they'll kind of, like, be a little scared. Like, we hmm. have to listen to you. Hmm. You think he was trying to scare um, back of the bus or me by the way he was looking at us? Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Have you seen that from white people? Other white people, like they'll try to scare you when they're talking to you? Yes. Hmm. Interesting. Like when people would answer, I mean, when white people would um, ask me questions that they're really not supposed to, and then like, they would look at me like, I want you to listen to me. Hmm. Wow, that's uh, that's uh, an excellent observation. Because um, I feel like I feel like if we're being honest, I feel like every non-white person knows that white people have a tendency to uh, try to be very intimidating when they talk to you. I think that's been demonstrated on the cows, in fact, where white people will try to. Um, scare you with the way that they talk, um, but I've never heard a non-white person uh, talk about that. Um, wow, I think that's A+. plus. You see, you could have that on your blog. You could have that on your blog. White people are scary. They try to scare you when you talk to them. Um, wow. Wow. Yeah, I don't okay, have a blog. So I, I know, I know, and we're losing out. If you had a blog, you could put that on your blog. That could be like a, a little uh, homework assignment, counter-racism homework assignment to like have uh, two or three blog posts a week, you know? 
But you don't have a blog, so, you know, oh well. Um, so when <laughs> you said uh, the, uh, the suspected racist, Matthew Fry Jacobson, um, he was eye contact, he was turning his whole body eye contact and trying to uh, scare black people who asked him questions about white supremacy. Um, hmm. Hmm. Did you, anything else that you picked up on? Not what I can think of at this point. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Um. <laughs> did you see the, did you see the Asian male? Did you see him uh, I guess defend <laughs> uh, Professor Jacobson from any white people who asked him questions. Yes, the oh. other. Yes, the other non-white. It was a non-white female. Like uh, she, she was looking really mean. I mean, like she was like she was serious. Like I. I, w I want to protect him, and then, like, she was also saying, like, uh, so you're saying that non-white people can't be racist either? Hmm. Like that's what uh, she was saying. And the Asian male, he got upset with her, too, this non-white female, or? Um, I don't remember. Um, okay. yeah, I don't remember. Hmm. That's interesting. I know uh, I missed um, a lot of what happened at the end because um, we had a show the same day at 4 p.m. So I missed like the last, uh, I don't know, good half hour or so of the, pro, uh, of the seminar um, where some, some of the other non-white people were asking him questions. And uh, yeah, but uh, I, I do remember uh, I was, uh, for the time that I was there, for the time that I was there, um, I was the only person who had to validate a question. And what I mean is the Asian male, uh, or, or, <laughs> wait a minute, uh, make sure I'm on my job. Um, the Asian male, um, he, uh, Ask, he said, well, what does your question have to do with whiteness studies? And the question that I asked was, I think, because Professor Jacobson had made a remark about another white person stealing his thunder, in quotes, uh, with regards to publishing a book about white supremacy. And uh, I said, uh, just, you know, speaking in that manner, like somebody's going to beat me to getting, you know, the fame and glory and adulation, um, that sounds like another subtle way that white people would practice racism, like to do this work to get praised, to get glory, and certainly to not be thought of as a racist. And uh, he, he used a lot of words and talked, and I mean, it was, it was great. I, it was great. I wish uh, I had a recording of it. Um, he said... Uh, Ultimately, he said, you know, the first thing he did, this was great racist tactic, I felt. The first thing he did was try to invalidate what I had said. Um, the white person that he was saying beat him to his thunder was uh, David Rodiger, okay? Uh, he's written a lot of books. I, I will probably work on having him on the program some point soon. Uh, but he said that he was not talking about David Rodiger, that he said, Noel Ignatiev, okay? Uh, Noel Ignatiev has been on this program. Uh, he was on in July of 2009. Uh, have, being that I'm familiar with both of those gentlemen, I'm pretty certain that uh, I would not have confused Noel Ignatiev for David Roderick. I mean, the names are not even in the same ballpark. Um, and so when he finishes his first response, the first thing I did was say, you know, I, I don't think uh, I confused the names. I think you said David Rodiger, and uh, there was an admitted racist sitting to one side of me who took pretty sharp notes. Uh, and I wanted to ask her, uh, since we had uh, a stenographer present, I wanted to ask her to go back through the notes and see which name he said. Uh, and I was like, you know, that's, that's really neither here nor there. And uh, he, he later conceded, oh, you're, you're right, I might have uh, been incorrect. It wasn't Noel Ignatiev. I did say David Rodiger. Uh, but that's not the point. 
and I felt I, I, that would have been a highlight. Boop, boop, boop. Um, this was something he brought up in the first place, Professor Jacobson. He brought this up uh, that I had made an error uh, about the white person he meant, the white person's name that he mentioned, only to discard it as irrelevant later, and to even admit that he probably made a mistake. It's just like, why did you bring this up in the first place? The only reason he even brought it up was to discredit me uh, as though I did something incorrect. Uh, I didn't have my facts together. Uh, I think it, it goes right along with what Justice said about how white people will try and intimidate you when they talk to you to make you feel uh, inadequate, stupid, like you don't have your information together and you should be, I mean, how dare you question me anyway? I'm a white person. Um, and, and you really just have to kick all that to the curb and just, you know, keep plodding away with your questions. Don't let white people frighten you. Just, uh, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. Um, but wow, that's that's interesting. Did you did you feel like he was trying to scare the non-white female when she was asking him questions? Did you feel like he was trying to scare her too? You mean Matthew Jacobson? Yes, yes. Um, no, because he wasn't looking directly at him, but the non-white female was looking. I mean, every time he was talking, moving, I mean, she would just, her eyes, and, like, her eyes would just move every time he would move or speak. He would, she would just look uh, directly at him. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting. Wow. Wow. Man, I wish, uh, yeah, it was, it was very interesting. I, I wish, because I, I, like I said, I missed the last portion, so I didn't, I didn't get to hear the non-white female um, asking questions. But um, I, did, I heard a lot of white people that were not really asking questions about racism. Um, I don't know, did you, did you think the questions that you heard from the other white people, did you think they were asking questions about, you know, racism and how to replace white supremacy with justice? Some of them. Some of them. Yeah, I thought, uh, I remember a lot of uh, what I would call like irrelevant questions, uh, tangential, if you will, questions. Um, like people were asking about, you know, resources, uh, excuse me, sources for your uh, dissertation, things of that nature. Um, helpful information, don't get me wrong, helpful information for whoever, you know, is asking the question, but not really uh, relative to uh, racism, white supremacy, I thought. Uh, and, and, and especially since I, a black male, uh, was the only person who was asked to validate uh, the question that they asked. I was the only person um, while I was there, it might have happened to some of the other folks after I left, but while I was there, nobody else had to, you know, show how their question was relevant to what was being discussed, which I thought was very interesting. And uh, also because the, uh, the Asian male uh, asked me to justify the question that I asked. So, yeah, very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, I guess with... Uh, with uh, W. Kamau Bell, um, victim of racism, white supremacy, she's still counting. Um, did, uh, did you think at any point he was, he was defending white people? Did you feel like that at any point? Um, you mean like, um, who? Who was this? Um, just any white people. I don't know whether it would be his wife or his white friends or uh, any white people. Did you feel like he at any at any point was defending uh, any white people? No. No. Hmm. I have to think again. I have to uh, I have to listen uh, to the program again. Just if nothing else, I'll have to listen to count the number of cowbells um, in the program. Um, I have it. I have it on good authority. Justice, she said that it got to at least twenty. Was it more than twenty? You said. 
Um, I would suspect at least like 20 cows out. <laughs> at least 20, okay. Okay, yeah. Because, I didn't count. Uh, because like um, sometimes you would do one cowbell and then wait for about five seconds and then you do another one. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was, uh, they were pretty rapid sometimes, <laughs> like, and it would be two separate things. It wouldn't even be just trying to add emphasis. It would be two separate things that he said that, you know, uh, warranted a cowbell. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, as predicted, as predicted, uh, as I said, check out the, uh, the Friday program with uh, Lauren Ashley. She might even call in this program. But the Friday broadcast with uh, Lauren Ashley, um, I said I thought it was going to be um, more than 15 cowbells. More than 15 cowbells. And uh, Justice thinks uh, it was in the neighborhood of 20. Oh, okay, Lauren, I, she did call in. She did call in. We'll see what she has to say. Oh, oh, oh wait a minute. Got to give him the email address. Uh, let's hear the email address, Justice. Justice.asap at yahoo.com. Again, justice.asap at yahoo.com. Outstanding. Um, I want to get uh, Lauren on because she might have a uh, question for you. But before that, I did want to read the comment because you got a wonderful comment uh, on the program. <laughs> you, got, you got a wonderful program. Um, on the broadcast earlier today that uh, you said was without a doubt the worst episode ever but even with that still this is what one of the people who wrote in had to say about uh, justice from uh, today's broadcast uh, I think this is a non-white person could be incorrect uh, we'll see um, okay uh, justice gives me hope that our future can be bright. Keep up the good work. That was uh, on the seven. Wrote that today's show with uh, W. Kamau Bell. Um, I thought that was cool. <laughs> yeah. Thought that was cool. But um, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening, and thank you for commenting. Um, Please do Justice an email if you uh, appreciate her work here at the Cows. Uh, Lauren Ashley, are you there? Hello? Yep, we can hear you. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> did, you, uh, did you have any comments uh, for Justice, uh, what she thought, or the program with uh, W. Kamau Bell? Um, I just find it interesting that... Um when, when he said about discussing race with his white wife, that uh, she was talking, he said that she, what did he use, what word did he use? We have to recognize his male privilege or something? Right, right, right. Um, he's a black male. What privilege does he have? I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. I'm a little confused about that. Double whammy. Right, 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 <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. The fact that he's black, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. What, what privilege does he have? White women are the biggest beneficiaries of affirmative action. So, what privilege does he have over her? What privilege does he have at all? But what privilege does he have over her? That's what I'm trying to understand. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's confusing. <sighs> but, yeah, that's only, <laughs> when I heard that, I was a little shocked. I was like, wow, uh, I suspect that she, uh, yeah, that's practicing racism. Because uh, I don't, I don't, yeah. We did a whole show about, you know, black males being honest by the position in society. And, uh, yeah, yeah. But that's all, that's all I really wanted, all my comments that really stood out. Hmm. Did you, uh, Justice? He estimates that the cowbell count was in the twenties. Um, did you, did you think uh, any of the cowbell rings were unwarranted? Do you think uh, any of those should be subtracted? 
Uh, no, I don't, I don't think none should be sub subtracted. When the whole, um, we talking about male privilege and stuff, that right there, I was like, ding, 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 ding. And yeah, he's a black male. What privilege does he have? I'm trying to, that's confusing, but yeah. But I probably have to go to the show to, uh, really pick up on what I missed. Did you, uh, oh, did you... Feminism. Oh, we talked about that. The G the GD show. Feminism. <laughs> anyway. Okay, what was your question? <laughs> uh, what, what did, uh... Did he bring up feminism? I'm just... <laughs> no, I'm just saying he, that, you know, the male privilege. That, that's that feminism... Well, um, the feminism brainwashing, you know. Oh, you know, it's, it's not racism. It's, uh... Males are pushing females and crap like that, so yeah. That male privilege. Uh, male privilege. Male brainwashing. Wow. Wow. Could be part of the castration. Could be part of the castration. You have to, uh, you have to listen to that Friday show. Tell you, the, the cowbells is explained on the Friday program with Lauren Ashley as well as uh, the castration bit. All of that is explained on the Friday program. Uh, check it out. Blog Talk Radio. Um, just, uh, just going to make sure I got everything. Did you, did you feel like uh, sad, I guess? Did you feel like he was defending white people at any point, defending white people? Um, I know I pointed out he was the abstract thing he was doing that. Did you feel like he was defending white people at any point? Um, I don't think clearly. I just think um, being so specific, especially that definition, not the definition, but just be, being like just his question, I think that kind of made him uneasy because uh, it was kind of pretty clear that uh, she suspects white people. Mm -hmm. And uh, white people only, so it made the spotlight on white people. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was on easy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'll see nine oh nine because I I was curious about that as well because it seemed like he. And again, not not beating up on a victim. This is another reason why I'd rather have white people on the show. Exactly this right here, um, but you know, um, did you feel like this is not on nine? It's on the line. Did you feel like uh, Justice was making him uncomfortable on the program with the question she was asking? Yeah, and I think it's the fact that she's ten, and she sounds, you know, it's obviously that she's young. I don't know if she said her age, but you say her age. I don't remember. I did not. I did not. Oh, okay, but yeah, it's uh, kind of it's kind of obvious that she's a child, right? So I think that kind of made him uneasy that you know a child is so clear about racism, and white supremacy, <laughs> and uh, he, he's very clear on that she's a victim of racism. I think that kind of made mm. him uneasy. So. Hmm. But this is rocky. I was like, mm, go justice. <laughs> <laughs> Am I feeling pop off like go just? <laughs> she was uh, she, yeah. <laughs> she was on it. She was on it. She was on it. And definition. She gave him the definition for racism and uh mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she was she was on it. Um nine oh nine, did you think uh did you think he was justice made him uncomfortable on the program? W. Uh, Kamal Bell. Mm, yeah, he said it. He said it too. He said it. He said it felt surreal, which means disorientating. So yeah, he he said it. So yep, she definitely made him feel uncomfortable. And uh, mm -hmm. the, when she asked him about um, she, like the question she asked was just. Man, on point. Like justice is justice is on point in so many ways. It's, it's a oh, when she asked him about um, you know, what ways does he how does he uh suggest that we uh end racism? And then he got you know his answer to that. He was like, I don't know. <laughs> like yeah. he did. 
or, or and then he, you know he started with the jokes again or laugh not not so much with the jokes but laughing or whatever you know one way is for white people not to ask to touch black people's hair <laughs> you know what I'm saying uh, you know like I said um, he's a victim so we ain't trying to we can't be beating up on him but justice did she did she did a good job you know it, the job she did I feel like keeps kind of keeps the, the the adults from having to you know go <laughs> all <laughs> she, I, feel me? I, I totally agree I totally agree I, I uh <laughs> I totally agree. I, justice, uh, I think, justice could do what I, I don't think any adult could do. I think justice can can offer feedback that it would be very hard to attack a ten year old, giving her view on what happened on the program. Um, I think that's just very different. Having a ten year old victim of racism uh, critique uh, what someone had to say about racism, uh, particularly someone who makes their living talking about racism. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I think a 10 year old should be able to offer her feedback and, uh, you know, if you don't like it, whatever, she's 10, uh, if, if, if it made you uncomfortable, that might be something to investigate why a 10 year old could rattle you, uh, when you make your living talking about racism. Right. Hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I think, I think she had great questions. I think, uh. She picked up on that cowbell. She picked up on that immediately. <laughs> like, hey, that uh, that cowbell has some significance here, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, that was that was great. That was great through and through, through and through. Did did you feel like uh, 909, did you feel like he was defending white people uh, at any point, directly or indirectly? Mm, I was thinking when... Um, um, maybe indirectly... Um, he what did he say? He said, um, what did he say? oh, when he started talking about um, sexism, oh, she asked him about comedy. She said, you know, do you study racism in, in comedy? And he was like, yeah, there's a lot of racism in comedy, and there's sexism, and there's uh, you know, a couple of couple more isms. You feel me? So I think in that way, you're kind of downplaying the racism and going toward going to other um, issues so maybe in that sense and there was something else that he said that I, I, I can't um, I can't remember right now but yeah I think I think so more more indirectly though it's his his you know like I said damn it, it, it's hard not to um, I just think his his whole his whole, like when Justice was talking about um, not not really laughing about like racism, I think more um, than not laughing. Like you know, we sometimes we'll laugh about something, but I think his particular um, comedy, I think it's it's more like complaining. You know what I'm saying? Like a he. he He's, I think he's, he does more does more harm than good. Like it doesn't spark the type of conversation that you want to have after a show. You know that's why I stopped going to comedy shows. It's because it, you know you have to be very, in my opinion, very intelligent to be a comedian because you're trying to spark an imagination. You're trying to spark a conversation, and you know you, that takes a lot of intelligence to to be able to do that. And most comedians, they have no idea how to how to do that. You know, Dave Chappelle tried, Richard Pryor tried, and you when you see him in, <laughs> when you see him in interviews today, they they go on and on about the mistakes that they made. They apologize, and even um, what's this? The guy um, Paul Mooney. Same thing with him getting on TV and have to, having to denounce the N word. Richard Pryor did the same thing. So, uh, and, and Dave Chappelle went, went, went on there and said that the, the, the white people that he was working with were, were laughing at him. He said he, he said he heard a laugh that that made him feel so uncomfortable. He knew it wasn't 
he knew that he he basically said he he felt like he he was a sellout. He referenced himself as that today, as a sellout. He used that term. I know I don't even use that term. I don't use it, and uh, I don't know what it means. But he did. He did say. Uh, I think at one point we didn't laugh. Um, we right. didn't laugh at something he said, or there was a pause in between uh, him talking and the response. And he said, uh, "Am I thrown off or something to that? Am I thrown out? Are you just? You, do you all disconnect me? Uh, get out of here, sellout." He said that. He said that. Mm-hmm. He said that. It's, it's self hate, man. It's self. It's, it's sad to say, and it's not a. I don't think it's. I think it's not sad to say because it's not a um, phenomenon. I think it's very common. But when you see it in a performance, it's it's incredible. It, it's it's interesting when you see it in a performance. You're like, wow, this. You know, this person is 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 basically doing a performance of self hate. When you start, when you start referencing and you start associating things, like you said with the drugs, you know you still you associate black people with uncut. You feel wow, and, and, and even start talking about black people washing their hair with dirt. Oh, that's yeah, 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 yeah. You get a black. You, I mean that he doesn't. He has no idea what he's doing. That's the that's the and you could and, and it's it's obvious we don't have to go that very far it is to say you're married to what <laughs> who <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness people don't put these things together man uh, um within themselves and it's just like wow you're looking at somebody that really has not put the pieces together. I haven't either. I haven't either. I want to make that very clear. I I don't even have a phone. Hey, I don't have a phone. Somebody, <laughs> yeah, I don't even have a phone. So I mean, hey, I, I have not put the pieces together myself. Um, I'm I'm right. still very confused. These white people uh, got me scratching my head too. But uh, yeah, but you're being yeah, careful. You're not being reckless. Yeah. As maybe you know, we could like I said, I could be mistaken. I think it's reckless. To go out there and try to, uh, I have a little bit of experience with this, you know, it, it being, you know, in the entertainment field and wanting, wanting, you know, being from LA and stuff like that. So, if you don't know what you're doing, and you, you haven't really, you haven't really studied, and that's why that question with, with Justice about her, she said, "Have you studied? You know, have you studied?" And he said, "I don't know what you mean." Like wow, yeah. we should not have hazard. It's not. It, it's it's not good. You should be trying to. You should, you should be trying to be an expert at whatever it is you're trying to do to avoid the mistakes of of as many mistakes as possible. Be codified as possible. Be your be your best. So if people don't if people don't respect that, then you get. I, I, I said that she, he, he uh, what's her name? The Oreo Experience. Mm-hmm. They, they were, they remind me of. They kind of like the, the male and the female. She had a, a white, white um, partner too, didn't she? Yes. I'm not ringing the cowbell because I over one, so I'm I'm compensating. But I would have <laughs> rung right there. <laughs> yes, yes, and they know each other uh, via. Uh, they know each other via blogging and online. They have communicated, and uh, she has blogged about him. So they, there is a connection there. And act, oh, <laughs> yeah, I got to get Lauren in on that because we talked about that before the show. But Justice, do you remember when Oreo Experience was on the show? Do you remember her, non-white female? Can you repeat that question one more time? Do you remember when Oreo Experience was on the show, the non-white female? I'm sorry, one more time? Oreo Experience, the non-white female who was on the program uh, last month or in January. Her name's Oreo Experience. Sorry. 
sorry, my brother was bothering me. I couldn't hear you. Oh. <laughs> uh, Oreo experience. Do you remember uh, Oreo experience, the non-white female? She was on the show in January. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, did W. Kamau Bell, did he remind you of her in any ways? Do you, are, are there any things similar alike between the two? Yes. Um, now that you kind of just remind me about um, the Oreo experience, um, they kept like oh, uh, um, Oreo and Mr. Bell. They're very similar, like because like they uh, tell jokes. They um, they do comedy. They um, do comedy and they like to try to get people to laugh. Hmm. Hmm. Do you think? Uh, and did they both say that they try to get people to think about racism? by telling jokes about racism? Um, I, don't, I don't remember. I don't, yeah, I don't remember. Okay. I think they, uh, they both might have said that. You have to compare those two. So that'll be two programs. Put those together. <laughs> like, wow. That'll be real interesting. And you can imagine how many cowbells you think there should have been uh, in the program with Oreo experience. I think that one would have probably gotten in the 20s, too. That one would have probably gotten in the 20s, too. Um, Lauren Ashley, we talked about this before the show, about similarities, differences between Oreo Writer and W. Kamau Bell. Um, now that you've heard both shows, any similarities? Do you see anything similar between the two? other than that they're not white comedians, black comedians? Mm. Mm. I can't really think of the stuff that I saw before. I'm sorry. Oh. Hello? Yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening. I can't really think of the stuff that I saw before. I didn't write it <laughs> um, I had to think about that. I, I definitely think self-loathing, like that's in the definition that she gave on the program. <coughs> uh, or not in the definition. It might have been in the definition, but I definitely remember self-loathing is a post that she has um, on the blog. And I definitely see a strong trend of that in both both of their styles of comedy. Um, the washing hair routine that uh, 909 just mentioned, comparing uh, black people in the states to uh, drugs. Um, um, yeah, I, I definitely see the the self degree. Even there's a uh, there's a skit he does where he he's showing like a black female getting upset because he's dating a white woman, and uh, he said, you know, you should be glad that these white women are available to take my trifling hands off you, take uh, take my trifling butt off your hands, or something to that effect. Um, but yeah, I, I see a strong trend between the two of that that self that kind of self hating uh, on display at times. Um, mm. Deep. Not uh, picking. Oh right, right. Oh, just, <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was gonna say uh, confused too. They were, but they both seem very confused. I think they they both, I'm sorry. It. I'm sorry. You know, mm. it, 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 they're saying that they're trying to spark a conversation, maybe be um, anti-racist, and um, then you look at their material, and you're like, "Wow, you're confused because this is not uh, sparking any type of." constructive conversation and it's not working against uh, uh, racism you know and remember we were talking about uh, the, the, the um, phrase jokes or grievances yes sir yes sir yes sir and doesn't that sound like um, what he's what, you know what he's, what he's what he's saying those are grievances like resentments like things that he was so 
um, I think, uh, like I said, you have to be very, I used to try to write, um, you know, I used to try to write um, jokes and use mm -hmm. uh, the knowledge that I had with, um, and I found that, I found it very difficult uh, to do, to make it, mm -hmm. um, to make it where I wasn't just being, just, you know, being, just complaining or speaking on some type of distress or stress that I had or me having some resentment about my uh, position. Hmm. Hmm. How could you not talk about it? I mean, <laughs> how could you not? Right. It's, it's right there. It's always there. And, you, you know, you try to turn the tables and, and really get white people to, to be uncomfortable about what they're doing or about, you know, the things that they do and, and still laugh, you know what I mean? And that's hard. Paul Mooney, um, you know, you, we see, we, we've seen, like, them fail. And they were supposed to be some of the greatest writers, uh, comedic uh, writers there are, and they, and they all failed in doing that. When, when, when white, peop white people just get up and walk out of Paul Mooney's um, show, if it was if it was reflective, and when it wasn't reflective, they would they w they would either not laugh, and if it was um, if it was a grievance, then they would laugh bomb in a bombast way, which you lose in that case. So, like I said, you got to be you got to be incredibly intelligent to do this work and and um, and be successful. So. They not even. I mean, man, justice was on. Justice was justice was on point. I don't think it was the worst show. If you if you analyze it, <laughs> on some levels, because listen, I said when I was listening to it, I said, you know, Gus said. Like, like two shows ago, he said one day people will be like, you know, this is the greatest show ever, and the next day they'd be like, I'm not listening to this show. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, this might be one of those shows where <laughs> someone's like, what in the world is this? Like, I know within myself, that's what I was thinking, like, oh my, here we go. You know, uh, I, I, you know, I had to I had to check myself because, like, when you said, like, this is an excellent show, and I was like, excellent show, like, what in the world? And then I just, at, at first, I kind of got disoriented as to what was going on. And then when I finally, you know, listened to the whole thing, you know, I, it kind of cleared my head. But I said, man, I can see where I, I thought about that statement that you made because I was almost one of the... I was almost one of them people. <laughs> That's why I tell you, I appreciate the honesty. That's why I tell folks, don't you get caught up listening to that crowd because the same people that, oh, it's crazy, love everything. Man, you will be out with no friends and forget. Like, that's the wackest thing in the world. I never liked it. It was wild. Right? right. Don't get caught up into that, man. Just do what you think is constructive and, uh, you know, just be your own best critic. That's the best thing to do, for sure. Because, uh, I mean, number one, I, I, it's no way I could say on the air for any show, it's no way I could say this is the worst show ever. Um, it's like, uh, I could never do that. Plus, I felt like, uh, if nothing else, it would be real interesting to uh, to go back and count the cowbells. If nothing else, um, like I, I think, just I'm sorry. Sorry about that. I was just gonna say you missed missed a couple, but I I, I kind of felt like I did, I did, I did. Go overboard, you know. I said, <laughs> I said he don't want to go overboard. That's why I, that one didn't happen. That's why that one didn't happen. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean. My, my, I mean, I was there. My, thing, I could have just rung the whole show if I wanted to. I mean, yeah. I figured once we got over fifteen, it was it was really no point in uh, you know acting a fool. But uh, plus, I thought I was surprised that he did inquire about that. Like, you know, what is that noise? Why does it keep ringing? Um, right. Yeah. I was mildly uh, mildly surprised about that. 
should have asked him at the end, like, did you hear, did you happen to hear uh, cowbells during the show? <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, that's, you know. I don't know. I, a lot of people listen to that show live. Uh, I don't know if it was their first time checking out the cows, but uh, I hope they will. I hope they will at least go back and get that Friday show so they can figure out the cowbells and uh, yeah, proceed. Um, yeah, life is crazy. Um, <laughs> Lauren Ashley, did you? Uh, we have uh, fourteen left, unless some wackiness happens between now and then. Did you want to share? Uh, what you said about uh, castration on Friday, uh, and if you felt there was any evidence of that exhibited in today's program. Um, I just wanted to point out. Um, he uh, he's he's very tall. He's um, I think he's like six something. I forgot what. And uh, he's dark. And I just uh, watching some of his comedy routines. I I've noticed that he has a uh, sometimes. In one video, he had a tendency to bend over, as in, like, not just look so threatening. He also, um, the glasses. Like, one of the videos I've seen, he didn't wear glasses at all. But, uh, he, I think that's another one. I think you mentioned that when we were talking, the glasses. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I think the... He talks about racism and uh, at the recent events, but I think the him not deep, go deeping, dig, deeping deep enough, no, digging deep enough, I'm sorry, digging deep enough into racism and learn more about it kind of, yeah, I think that's had to do with the whole having sex with a white person. <laughs> hmm. uh, I'm like, you, you, the Michael Max, but uh, not nearly fuller and well, I think that's uh. I don't know, that kind of leads up to that. To, yeah, so... But uh, I want to make a comment um, about Justice being on the show. I think uh, that helps uh, a lot of people from using the excuse that, you know, racism is ignorant. That's what it is. And uh, that's why people practice white supremacy. That is ignorance. Um, Justice is 10. And uh, she's very clear that she's a victim of racism. So what, what, what does a 10-year-old have to do, I mean, what has a, what, what would someone have against a 10-year-old? I mean, I think that just kind of debunks the whole argument that it's ignorant. That, uh, yeah, I just want to put that out there. Hmm. <laughs> Justice is, uh... Keeping track of the cowbells, that can be, uh, I don't want to do anything, I'm lazy. That can be, uh, Justice, that can be your task from now on on the program. Just count the number of cowbells and give us a cowbell report uh, before we sign off uh, at the end of the program. So you can do your email address and then the, the cowbell count. Uh, is, that, is that acceptable? Yep. I'll, uh, I'll try my best to, uh, to uh, count all of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I'll let you know, like, the programs where I think it's going to be a lot, like today, so that uh, you can be prepared, you know, stretch your fingers and everything. But uh, hopefully, well, that'll be interesting. That'll be interesting to track how many, man, you talk about having some data. Woo! Now, any program, and you can look at whether or not you think that program was constructed, and then look at how many times the count. <laughs> Oh, man, that should make any program, even if it's, uh, let me uh, get my, yeah, any program, even. It's without a doubt, the worst episode ever. Even if that's the case, just count the cowbells. That might be an explanation as to why the program was not as constructive as you had hoped. So that should improve the quality of any broadcast. Even if it is not up to par, count the cowbells. Right on. And you already have a report. The program with W. Kamau Bell, uh, we believe the cowbell count is over 20. Over 20. <sighs> Okie doke. So now we'll have a tally uh, on the programs. Um, I don't know if you all heard the... Uh, for, oh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, Non-Mighty Wick? Uh, you have your own mic. You know, you can hop in, hop in.
not uh, not hearing you. Not sure if his mic is on. Still not hearing. Okay. Well, he can hop in. Just uh, you know, yell out if uh, if you get it corrected and uh, you want to to share. Um, I wanted to uh, go back. Uh, Lauren Ashley, when we did the program on Friday, um, I was reading that, that part of France Fanon, Black Skin, White Mask, and uh, I wanted to point out one, one passage to see if it's applicable. Um, this, I read this one on, on Friday. Out of the blackest part of my soul, Across the zebra striping of my mind surges the desire to be suddenly white. I wish to be acknowledged not as black, but as white. Now, who but a white woman can do this for me? By loving me, she proves that I am worthy of white love. I am loved like a white man. I am a white man. Her love takes me onto the noble road that leads to total realization. I marry white culture, white beauty, white whiteness. When my restless hands caressed those white breasts, they grasp white civilization and dignity and make them mine. Page 63, France Fanon, black skin, white mask. Um, I kept having the vision of the face full of flower cover that uh, W. Kamau Bell himself, he said on the program, it, you cannot help but tie that to the image of whitening up. Uh, he said that on the broadcast. That, that just kept uh, running through my mind. Um, and actually, <laughs> make sure I break this one off. Um, gentleman uh, 310 called in, and he, he said that he admitted that he'd had sexual intercourse with a white female, and uh, he, he also said, or he asked if black males, <clears throat> if they would stop having sex with white women if they had more pride in themselves. And uh, he also has been talking a lot about pride and the importance of pride. Um, <clears throat> I'm just connecting the dots here. It, it sounds like um, perhaps uh, he felt like he did not have enough self-pride, and that was why he was engaging in sexual intercourse with a white person who could validate him, give him a sense of esteem, uh, and that if he had more pride, he would be better able to combat racism, white supremacy, and resist those sexual urges. I'm just connecting the dots. I could be incorrect, but he has stated all that on the program. I do try to uh, make sure I at least analyze things that happen on my broadcast. So uh, I'm just connecting the dots. What I just said could be crazy. Um, we have five minutes. If anybody would like to comment on what I just said, if you think it's crazy, I could have just made that up out of nothing. Share your thoughts. We have two folks on the line. You can share your thoughts about uh, my analysis of that. I might be incorrect. Right. Oh, hello? Okay. Yes, you're on the line. Yes, thank I'm you. I'm sorry. Um, mm. I think that could be in the sense that um, uh, well, see, I'm not a I'm, I'm not a non-white male, so I think you have a different understanding of that. But uh, I think when it comes clear. I could, I'm assuming that when it comes clear that uh, you are a non male, how much it sucks to be a non male, and um, I don't know how to explain it. Mm. I'm just going to be frank with talking, I'm sorry. Hello? Yeah, I heard you. <coughs> Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, it's interesting that people uh, 
people. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Like I said, it's a fine line. Um, the, the list is long. Uh, people that uh, have pride, it's so-called pride, and, 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 you know, Angela Davis, I think she was on the list of having a white husband, uh, white boyfriend, shake Aunt to Diop, he's married to a white lady. Uh, all they talk about is black history, black pride, black honor your ancestors and James yeah. Brown. <laughs> exactly. Black and don't proud. Proud of you are mm. seem like the uh but um the <laughs> oh, I got a... that should be at least two. That should be at least two. Ooh. Yep. Wow, and I see, I see that's a joke. That's a good joke. It's like, how do you know if you if you really uh, uh, respect your um, your black heritage? And it's like, well, if you, if you have a white wife, <laughs> you're disqualified automatically. You're disqualified. Or a white husband. Let's make sure we're not forgetting. If white right. husband, white wife, you you are disqualified. You yep. are disqualified. Exactly. Interesting now, that people that grow up around white people and just come into the and have sexual relationship with white people, all of a sudden, you know, they they're the ones talking about the um they they're they're, they're into like it's just interesting how that dynamic goes. Oh, it is. It always is context. I wonder, like, is it, the white people I'm like sorry. kick them out or something. And then they have to like they, they do like an OJ or something because uh, it seems like the the ones that be around white people the most and then all of a sudden they the yeah very weird uh, context of white supremacy. Uh, Justice gave me the tally. We are at fourteen cowbells. She said <laughs> fourteen cowbells. Um, <laughs> which and and keep that in mind. Fourteen cowbells. That means we are at least six short of what happened with W. Kamau Bell uh, earlier today. So uh, that's that's a that's a nice frame of reference uh, for how many times the bell rang. Um, yeah, again, not talking bad about anybody. More than just right. working my muscles, uh, trying to understand racism, white supremacy, and make some sense out of things that I see, and uh, and I do try to. Uh, remain critical of things that happen on the program. Make sure I am awake at the switch. And, uh, yeah, yeah, both with uh, what happened with Kamal Bell and uh, Mr. 310. I'm sorry, Justice. Hello? I think that was me. Oh, was, oh okay. Yeah, sorry. I, um, I just want to throw a question out there for the people who say, um, well, I'm all around white people. Uh, someone has sex with some person I have sex with, and they're informed about racism. Um, and I'm not trying to be funny, but if you were in prison, would you use that excuse to have sex with a male? Or if you were a female, if you were a female, would you use that excuse if you were in prison to have sex with a female? I mean, I think we're not really serious about this. Um, we don't really understand. Like, I think now when people have a problem understanding that sex eventually leads to babies. And and it's very dangerous, especially if you're a non-white male having sex with a white female, that she, it's her decision whether she wants to keep that baby or not. And she don't have to tell you. So, yeah. So sex leads to babies. And, um, I mean, non-white people, we are... Man, we are we are really messed up. But um, I think you are form by racist. You shouldn't be volunteering your future offspring to um, to go to just um, how can I put this to be that. I don't know how to explain it. You shouldn't be volunteering your future offspring when you know that. Um, you when you should be suspecting all white people of racism. Does that make any sense? And uh yep. they could have a white parent. And um yeah. So I just wanna throw that out there that uh, yeah, not white people sex just leads to children. And, and uh, we're not really uh, Huh? 
I was going to say he mentioned Lenny Kravitz on the show, too. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's a, mm-hmm. he's a, yeah, he has a black mother and a white father, right? Yeah. His mom. Yeah, oh. that was a trend, man. Let me, like, let me give you the three. Mm. Mm. What was the trend? I'm the trend was that most of the celebrities he mentioned in his ex have, are with white people. Mm. Are a mm. product of a, uh, white and not white. President Obama comes up a lot in his act. Yeah, Cuba Gideon Jr. I was like, dang. <laughs> no one talks about Cuba. I was like, dang. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he he uh, he did. And the three pointer for Lenny Kravitz. His mother, black female. His mother played Helen on the Jeffersons, who was married to Tom, the white guy. If you saw the Jeffersons, hit Lenny Kravitz's mom. The black female Helen on the Jeffersons, who was married to Tom, white man. Oh, hello. Thought we was off. <coughs> oh no, we're on. We're on. Yeah, um, those correlations and those um, those correlations are, I guess that's your field, um, Gus. But I don't think they're coincidence at all. <laughs> <laughs> none, none of it. None, man. You talk. We can. Justice pointed this out. Uh, Justice pointed this out. We can wrap if you want to give your email address, Justice. Hmm. I already did it, but uh, I'll do it again. Justice.asap at yahoo.com. Again, justice.asap at yahoo.com. Context of white supremacy, justice, Gusty Renegade. We'll be back Friday. Robert Allen, Port Chicago, mutiny. Uh, I do not believe in coincidence. I do not believe in uh, chance, random occurrence, uh, everything. <laughs> there is a reason why things happen. There is a reason why things happen. Justice uh, pointed this out. Uh, she said, uh, Kamau Bell, and she put uh, Bell in bold print. Uh, and I just, uh, yeah, Kamau Bell. Over 20 bells uh, on the W. Kamau Bell broadcast. Uh, no coincidence at all. No coincidence at all. Uh, signing out. Uh, I'll, I'll clown a little bit as we uh, as we sign out. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll be back Friday. Replace white supremacy with justice as soon as possible. Uh, justice, all star uh, effort. All star effort. Thank you for sharing. Get that blog up. Thank you for sharing. We'll be back uh, on Friday, March fifth. Bye. White girl going through my mind. Sarah Jack and Julie. White girl, Julie Jack and Sharon. Help me along. The more I see, the more I do. Don't tell me it's a five o'clock. That's right. He don't wanna know what's going on. Okay. Cause white girls will go away. There's one thing I know about. Think it's a ride. White girl, I wait. Tell all the white girls they can swing my way. What up, baby girl? How you doing? Is you single? Have you ever messed with a light skin man dingo? And I could give a damn what all my friends say to me. You and me, baby, can start making up a slavery. Girl, I'm just playing. I got a white mom. You got any black in ya? Now, would you like some? Or would you like my songs that be playing on the radio? Well, you know this in serious form of flattery. For late show, I ain't a picky guy, so I really don't care. If you're a hippie white chick who got under on hair. Or I got a white chick who be trying to act right. With your name on your chain and your hair slid back. You could be from anywhere, Maine down to Malibu. Cross the trailer park all the way to Park Avenue. See me with a black girl, you got the wrong man. Or it might have just been a white girl with a tan. And sisters don't get mad, cause I'm out banging white chicks, cause we all look the same. When we turn up the light switch, see back in the day, I was getting no play. Then I went the white girl way like OJ. You can call the cave, but I'm sorry, OJ. Cause I got my white girl and everything is okay. White 
Don't wanna know what's going on. Okay. Cause white girls won't go 